Welcome back. I think today we're just going to be playing some Blitz, but um, if I change my mind and actually start analyzing my most recent games, that might be a productive use of time as well. Um, <laughs> as if Blitz is a productive use of time, but still. Um, all right. Oh, also, I want to go back and use the 3D pieces. I know that's going to tick off everybody, but like that's how I most enjoy playing on the site. Um, so I'm confused about this system, like not totally sure what's going on there. Um, what's my best way to, no, I don't want to put a pawn on e5, do I? If I want to try to do something aggressive, how do I do that? Is this how I do it? Um, and I could plunk my knight over here and then over there. Um, okay. I don't think b4 is happening, so why was a3 played? I'm pretty sure I have a solid grasp over this uh, b4 square so yeah um today's subject is uh life the universe and everything um it's a good douglas adams reference uh, so I still don't understand the motivation for what's going on here. Like, even if this pawn makes it all the way to b5, what then? But also, it's not going to make it that far. Well, we're going to play my knight here. It's too late for me to play a4. Not that it was viable in the first place, but um, let's put my rook on an open file. And put my knight in the center, because why not? I get the sense that I am playing a very strong player, because um, they have a very solid formation here. There's no weaknesses on their side, there's no weaknesses on my side. It's just a nice, boring, solid game. Um, let's get my knight off this diagonal and cover the b6 square. And I haven't really decided where I mobilize my pieces yet. Um, clearly, I have impeded my pawns. So that strongly encourages white to just march up the center of the board. Hey, how's it going? Um, I saw that one of the things Lee Chess is doing is if a streamer's not active for a while, um, sometimes they have to reapply or... Well, I guess they don't do applications, but um, they the streamer badge can get unmarked from an account if they're inactive for too long. And that's not my purpose for streaming today. Not at all, but um, I'm just uh, curious if my account still, um, to other people, not just to me, looks like I am a streamer. I assume so. Alright, I'm so confused. <laughs> YOLO. This looks fun. I'm still not sure where the c8 bishop belongs, but I've put some pressure on the dark square here, and I guess that's a dark square Although if my, my knight goes there, it has no future, so I'm not really threatening to move to c5. And probably e3 will get played. Well, this is kind of what I was hoping for. Um, so I'm going to offer, does my opponent want to exchange bishop for a knight so we can have some sort of intrigue in this position? Probably not. <sighs> Um, okay, my statement about playing against a really strong player, I'm starting to step back on that one. 
obviously they're pushing me around, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good player. Um, so they're going to have to make a decision about whether or not to do that, and they've made a decision, and that gives me a target, and yes, I am cramped, but all my pieces can mobilize out the A file, so I'm not sure that this cramp is permanent. Um, and if they play knight a4, then I can double here and, like, yeah, so we're just going to escalate. That's fine. Um, all right, that's legal. Well, I've got to get my pieces off the back row. I guess I'll take here. And then we'll get the rook out. So, no tactical blunders. I've probably made some strategic blunders here at some point, but I don't see them yet, but they're probably there somehow. And if this position ever opens up, then the bishop pair will be useful, but I have to bear in mind that this is a big problem, so I have to be very careful how I open this position. Um, so what now? It's tricky being cautious and calculating everything. So if I get the queens off the board, maybe that'll help with the calculation side of things. Um, I won't have to worry about so many mate threats. Alright, I didn't think that would be uh, so convenient. So I guess we're going to plug this up, and having done that, um, then undermine the pawn center, and suddenly there's another file. But also I can play bishop f5. Um, so, um, yeah, that's of interest as well. I've miscalculated. All right. Oh, that doesn't work. Or does it? Uh, well, that could have been much, much worse. All right. Let's take it and run. And I've won a pawn. GG, <laughs> no re. Just kidding about the no rematch part. I'll probably accept, but still, this is quite an adventure, isn't it? Rook A8. Yeah, not everybody likes this time control. I admit it's a bit addicting. Um, so the notion here is you prefer to keep your pawns on the opposite square color as your bishop. That said, I have two bishops. Um, so it's not entirely clear what to do here. Uh, but we can seek an exchange of bishops right here and make sure not to hang this. Um, alternatively, I just march my king up the board and keep attacking stuff. All right. Yep, now I see how it is. If 
This uh, diminishes the power of his bishop. And now I go back. Now that I have no weaknesses, I just force his king out of the way. Man, he's being stubborn. That's kind of incredible. Just how stubborn he can be in this ridiculous position. Um... Oh, right. I forgot he could do that. Um, okay. We're going to have to play a little bit more accurately than this. Um, so it looks like I will have to play for some sort of break here. I can certainly do that. Yeah, I guess I'll take on g4. Fine, whatever. Does he think I don't know what's going on here? Because he's only half right. Like, obviously I gotta be careful here. Why would you do that? You threw away your one chance. Oh my goodness. Like, if g3 lands with check, that kind of ends things. Um, I mean, yeah, I could take the bishop, but... What was that about? What a game. <laughs> wow. Okay. What happened this game? Oh my goodness, what happened? Um, so uh, other than me bungling the end game, bishop c6 is a blunder? I don't believe that. I think just that stockfish without table bases or something is struggling with this. Um, Bishop c6, yeah, no, king g2 puts a better resistance, but this is just winning. Um, I'm just bad at endgames. Taking on g4 was fine the whole time. Uh, king h2, uh, what was king h2 so bad about? Did he have, like, some perpetual or threefold or something that I completely missed? I don't know. King f1. Oh, King F1 does force me to be a bit careful. Yeah, I, ha I have to repeat then. Um, okay. King E2 is trash. Uh, well, I mean, it keeps my king away, but this is just... You're not going to defeat this and taking there. So King E2 is a terrible idea. I know the engine likes it, but no. That's not how humans play the game. Um... King d4 was not so great. Bishop g6. I was debating, do I want my bishop here or there? Um, I don't think it made a big difference, but I guess this is marginally better. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if I'm pulling my king back, that's stupid. I should just play my bishop forward so I can threaten this. But also, if the bishop moves away... Um, then I could force the opponent's king to move away from this corner because I control all these spaces. They have to go to g1. And then I could just march the king in, um, just across here. So, I mean, this is the obvious win right here. You just take the pawn. I missed that because I was trying to line up the fork and just not thinking straight in time pressure. Um, g4, yeah, does uh, diminish the power of the bishop, so h4 is the best way to take advantage of this, setting up that uh, maneuver that we just talked about. Um, at which point white has to play bishop e4 immediately, and they did. Um, 
and Black uh, was doing okay until Black completely whiffed on this. Um, so I'm sure if White had an extra tempo, well, I don't know. Like if White could get the bishop back here, that's still no good. Even if the bishop can land there. Um, hmm. That's problematic. So bishop e4 deflects the bishop. Then we cover that square. And what's the right way for black to win this? Uh, to check and then to take the bishop. Okay. Um, it's fair to say that I like endgames. <laughs> yeah, 3 plus 2. I prefer 3 plus 2 over 3 plus 0. Oh. But 3 plus 2 is not the world's best time control either, um, as evidenced by this game, uh, where I muscled around this 2,000 rated player forever. Um, yeah, Knight A2. Uh, the time situation here is they were down to 11 seconds, but for several move or many moves, they've been ahead on the clock. Um, and I had been calculating a lot of things, and now their time is starting to run thin as, um, uh, yeah. No, I don't, I was pretty sure this rook takes a3. I completely missed e4. Sorry, this is just a stream of consciousness at this point. So the point here is that they're threatening rook a2. And then once rook a2 lands, regardless of where this rook is, the b pawn is vulnerable. Um, and that taking twice on a2 isn't so hot either. Oh, I did not have time to calculate this, but I forgot, like, well, one, there's this threat, which allows me to take this square back. Um, or if they had to move the queen over this way in response to this bishop move, um, then I could bring my rook over and this does not trap the queen on account of, like, uh, sorry, not that square, but this one. So I missed this queen trap idea. Opening the center gives me the ability to hit the queen and give my queen an extra square, um, which I did not see in time. So that's what this is about. Uh, well, I guess there's also this, but still. Like, the uh, key idea is that um, there's no queen trap, um, as there was in the game. This is a move where I... I didn't see the queen trap until after I moved this. So I'm not just making that up. I, I did not think this was a legitimate trap, and it is... Um, so yeah, e4 seals the trap, um, and rook a4 here, um, wins the queen. And normally when your opponent's winning your queen, you at least get something for it, but here my bishop's hanging too. So, like, and any passed pawn I get is amply, uh, defended so many different ways so there's really no counter attack here so all of this is to say like if i'd seen uh e4 i would have had to try whatever um bishop f5 can't be accurate here i would have had to uh i don't know what the term is but sacrifice here and grovel for a draw uh just relying on having some sort of attacking counter chances against uh, this pawn, this pawn. Maybe I could stir up some trouble here. But really, this is pretty terrible. Um, so, yeah, I would have had to do that sacrifice straight away. Um, if I had seen that uh, bishop f5 just loses on the spot. I didn't play a blundering move um, with the intent of trapping my opponent. E6, questionable. So yeah, no, I debated bishop f5 here. Truly I did. I was afraid that this is inviting trouble. I had no time to calculate this. Um, our time situation 
My opponent had 40 seconds. I had 13 seconds. I wasn't going to get into this tactical stuff um, in extreme time pressure. Even though the engine says it is the best move, and it is, um, I couldn't figure it out. Now, what's unfortunate is that I also missed the pending, like, rook b2 to a2 uh, to a4 queen trap idea. And furthermore, rook a2 is enforced uh, by this knight here, so there's, like, this skewer going on. Um, so rook b2 forces me to play queen a1, which I missed. Um because the rook just came from the first rank, somehow it, it didn't even dawn on me that the a, a1 square was available. But yeah, um, so if not for that silly rook or queen trap idea, um, then e6 would have been fine. It's just that in this position, uh, because my queen gets trapped, or I end up losing an exchange, or whatever, however you slice it, it um, that makes e6 not just an okay move, but actually a blunder. Um, I just got lucky. And it's even funnier that I got lucky because I wasn't the one in time, or I was the one in time pressure, and my opponent was the one who blundered. Um, so yeah, there's the evil graph. Here's the big old spike where I was hanging everything. So this game started off... I keep forgetting that d5 is viable here, and I was asking, like, what do I do? d5 is the answer. And then white could optionally play d4 to transpose. Um, this is just a better version of a queen's gambit, or whatever sort of opening would give white this structure. Um, this is a better version because I've got in d5 in one go, and so I have a space advantage. Um, so the engine was rating this with d3 here as minus 0.3. Yeah, I would castle here. There's no reason to decide d3 or d4 straight away. d5 is fine, but expect that white's going to play d4. And yeah, isn't the symmetrical English fun? Um, is there anything white can do to make this an asymmetrical English other than playing d3? Or was that decided long ago here? It's like, I played c6. How does white try to extract some advantage from my playing c6? Because knight f3 ain't it. Like, if I face this position in a tournament game, uh, what might my opponent play? Oh no. The opening explorer is temporarily out of service. I cry. Truly I do. Um, d4, symmetrical English, except I haven't played c5. No, d4 is the way to go. e5 might be okay. I don't like this, but on the other hand, I'm not going to play e5 either because I'm in the same situation. Um, so yeah, uh, c5 I guess is thematic, d6 I guess is thematic. Would have been really cool to see what the masters play in this position. Um, but yeah, when my opponent's playing this uh, King's Indian attack stuff, or I'm sorry, they're playing the English, I don't feel like going into a mainline English right now. I've spent too long studying it. It's just not novel. So um, let's play another game. Yo! Ooh, I forgot I had that command. Uh. <laughs> Wait, what? I have Songlist bot in this channel? Okay, great. Well done, Songlist bot. Um. What even is that bot? I know, like, over time I've invited tons of different bots to my channel to see just, like, how many automated services I could get running. Um, and each of them is pretty cool on its own. Uh, and this kind of like Franken-bot thing that I've invented um, is kind of ridiculous and impractical. But each of them serves a distinct purpose. So 
All right, I'm thinking I'm going to castle Kingside. Um, this is interesting. I'm allowing knight g4. I might castle queenside after all, because I am crazy. No, 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 no. No, this would be too crazy. We can't do that. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot I have dark chess. Um, that site's out there. It's pretty awesome. If you want to play a game of chess which has StarCraft like Fog of War, and where all the pieces move like chess pieces, that's dark chess. What's new? Uh, Stockfish is always in development. I've done about like 30 patches in a row where I'm trying to make atomic chess work better, where it can solve some positions that humans are good at, but um, also not get worse at the game. And each one of those patches uh, has decreased its elo, so I've had to reject all my own patches, which was pretty great. Um, okay. Well, this is pretty ridiculous. Uh, let's, pieces belong on open files. My opponent is deliberately stalling. Um, so I've placed my rook on the D file just in time to protect my B pawn. I don't think that they're playing it right. <laughs> I can understand not wanting a castle into it, um, but, I mean, are you not going to castle? Is that what's going on today? Am I just going to let this exchange happen? I want a sack. Oh, none of the sacks are any good. All right, let's go back. Yeah... So, I mean, everybody's, uh, people frequently ask, like, why can't Stockfish just do this, and why can't Stockfish just do that? And so, like, fine, you know, I'm going to try some of my own ideas kind of like this and see, can I make Stockfish not blunder as often by tweaking its searching and evaluation and, um, just all the things it considers, can I simplify its set of parameters without reducing ELO? And incredibly, like, every one of the parameters, regardless how difficult it is to understand how that parameter changes the behavior, each parameter does uh, by itself contribute to an ELO gain. So removing any of these ridiculous parameters, which seem... I don't know, they give Stockfish its personality, but its personality is also its weakness, right? Yeah, I don't get it. Oh no. I know sometimes I've had problems with that dark chest site. Um, but if it's down for the count, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. Keeping a site up and running is not easy. Um, I want this pawn. Oh, wait. Wait a second. That pawn's mine. Oh, this is cool. So, like, here, if they take, I take, I'm opening the E file. Um, and if they take again on F5, I have bishop takes F7. All right. So you're going to move your knight again. So I win another tempo. Every time you move the knight twice, um, I gain a tempo for that pair of knight moves, because my bishop only has to move once to dodge it. <laughs> it's kind of counterintuitive, because they're like, hey, I'm gaining a tempo. Oh, I'm gaining a tempo again. <laughs> if I were playing black, that's what I'd be thinking. And um, One of my friends had to correct me on that line of thought. Um, just like, that's not how Tempe work. Uh, so now I'm debating, do I play knight g5 or do I play e5? There's so many possibilities. Let's do this. This seems so fun. So like this opens up shots everywhere. Um... 
All right. Um, mm -hmm. I really thought I'd have something convincing here. And really, I'm just draining my clock accidentally. All right, fine, we'll do this. And if we have to, we'll exchange on e6, and it'll just be sad. Um, I want to sack on f7, but I don't have enough pieces to back that up. f5 is loose. Uh, um, here, let's hit that. Oh, bishop f4 was the move. Gaining a... Well, I should have played that forever ago. Um, but we can play it now and see what happens. Um, okay, they've defended my obvious threat. Um... I can still play bishop f4 next turn. Now I've cut off this square. Um, okay, fine, I'll take here. If they take on c3, I might take d8. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, this is painful. Oh, this is painful. All right. Um, still painful. If the knight moves, I gain space. Space is mine. There's a check. Pin the knight. <laughs> get lucky that I'm not getting checkmated. That's so fortunate. Um, okay, fine. Pounce, so we're going to trap the pinned knight. Um, I don't have any useful discoveries, so we'll just do away with that concept. Uh, crap. Got to do this. All right, we'll hit the rook for tempo. Damn, he saw it. All right, that's unfortunate. Uh, we got to hit the rook. Oh, the rook moved. That's convenient. Thank you. All right. Got to exchange some pawns. Pretend to have some threats. Recognize that I can't do anything here. Uh, he recognizes that too. Continue pretending. Pretend harder. <laughs> oh. Okay. I forgot that Like, if I was going to try to gain a tempo, I'd have to be a little bit more tricky about it um yeah this is unfortunate all right we'll just hit that and if i just pretend hard enough maybe my threats will come true it's not looking likely uh, hey that's better. <laughs> All right. Things are looking up. I hope you've studied your uh, Rook Ed games. Uh. <laughs> oh, this sucks. This is terrible. Uh. Um. Oh, shit. <laughs> That was so bad on my part. The king opposition there does not favor me in the slightest. 
<sighs> so, just pretend that I've got something, and clearly I don't. Yep, no, that's the Lucena. Um, so hopefully you've studied it. All right, now we get the fun part. Uh, uh, yeah, this... Let's see how that goes. Study your Rook endgames. This is a public service announcement, guys. <laughs> uh, you definitely want to study them so you don't end up in this mess. Um. Mm, I blew it. I blew it. I suck. All right. Well, that was fun. We're going to look at that. I feel terrible about that because I should know this. <laughs> oh. Was I lost the whole time? I'm pretty sure, like, to draw that, my king would need to be on a8, and I never managed to get there. But there's a lot of ideas that make that difficult to win. Um, so, okay, this is apparently my best... Yeah, I could have temporized with king e6. It felt good, didn't it? Like, it felt like I had something. Um... So yeah, here the only way to draw this is to drop the rook back and over. But I'm this is just one rank too far up the board for that to work. So that's why I tried to resort to other stuff. Um, yeah, so what was it? Where did he make this easier for me? Um, I guess, yeah, b7 is accurate. Like... It's hard, or g2 is accurate. It's hard to find a better move. Uh, king f3 is actually, um, yeah, king f3 doesn't work. So yeah, king d3 is resilient, but they found g2. So like, this whole thing was lost. Oh my goodness. Um... And, yeah, the instant I played Rook B8, so I'm down to 15 seconds, and I was questioning, like, Rook B6. And realized I didn't have... It was, would take me 30 seconds plus to figure out, like, is Rook B6 playable here? There's just a ton of stuff to calculate between the H5 and F5 and Rook here and Rook back and over and all the various things Black can try. Uh, also, a rook up here and over. I didn't have time to figure out like whether rook b6 would have held better than rook b8. Um, rook b8 flopped, by the way, because uh, my opponent was able to threaten rook takes b6, which protects the f-pawn. And my opponent correctly pushed the h-pawn to exchange the outside pawns here. So even though I wanted pawns exchanged, this really didn't help my... Uh, situation much this particular exchange because um, black's still better enough that they could win this in time pressure um, is possible load piece set of other places um, so you can define I mean leech us plays in a browser and in a browser you can use plugins to customize what the site looks like so if you're asking me, like, can I get a custom piece set? Um, the answer is yeah. Like, you want these pieces? You could have these pieces. You just have to define the rules that in your browser make the board look like this. Um, but yeah, you could actually play a full game with this set and with like pieces from any site. So it plays. But you just have to set things up. That's the magic of uh, CSS. 
Whereas like your traditional application would not let you do that. Um, Browser-based applications or websites do let you do that. <laughs> you say that. I've streamed with that set before. And I've hung like everything. And it's been glorious. But also when I do that, I flip the board horizontally. So that when I'm moving the pieces on the left side of the board, they're actually on the right side of the board. And vice versa. Because, you know, that's the way to play. Um, so, like, I would be moving this pawn and, like, the I would see over here this pawn gets shifted. As I'm dragging my cursor and moving it over here. So... Now, one might argue maybe the reason I made that style was just to show, like, yeah, you can make styles for anything. Um, and maybe that was part of it. I don't know. Uh, so, like, can I get the chess.com pieces? I'm like, okay, I guess you could if you wanted them for some reason. We're not going to provide it for you, but if you wanted to, you could do it. You'd be the one supplying them, but... All right, so we got the Gioco Boringo. Um, wait, is this a free pawn? No, because this knight's not pinned this time. Um, yep, yep, yep. So, like, if you're going to play the Italian opening, why would you choose this variation? This one where... I don't understand it. White just hopes that Black's going to make some hideous blunder and hang all his material. And what ends up happening is that um, just like you get this real stale position where not much happens. Um, I should have hit the bishop before I played this move. I was too busy gabbing. I have to take this. And now what? So I could hit this and hit that at the same time, but... Oh, this position sucks. Alright. We'll retreat. Offer an exchange. They won't take it, of course. Because if they were to take this, we get an endgame. And you know how much I like endgames. Yeah, so that um, that browser plugin is called Stylus or Stylus. Um, um, okay, I'm gonna offer this exchange again. You can have it again if you want it. Really, what I'm trying to do is provoke this move, which would be just stupid here. But I'm trying to provoke it um, in a more general sense. Okay. Did you make that move on purpose? Holy moly. Knight takes, queen moves, knight d3 check, or I could take on e4 check, and then go back in d3 and... I don't get it. All right, we're going to take this with tempo. I mean, so that's not happening. This queen is moving. And maybe they forgot that, like, I don't have to move the knight right away, but I could move the knight if it benefits me. But otherwise, I could just choose to move something else. I don't know. Like, they must have forgot that I could move this piece. Or just didn't see this threat altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. I trapped a piece. I'm just that good. Uh, thankfully, I have a way out of it. That could have been terrible. <laughs> so, they can only take the pieces one at a time. Um, so this time, my bishop escapes. 
Uh, we're going to retreat to the edge of the board because bishops still work well at a distance. Uh, I don't see my bishop coming back this way. And I don't want to give a tempo with queen g3. So. Now I just have to take this square and wait for them to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now do I go back to g6? This is so... Yeah, we're going this way. Uh, okay. Did not expect that. It's a good move. I did not expect it, though. So we're going to have to scramble a bit. Um... Fine, I'm not giving up this square. Now without a fight. My opponent is playing very well. Um, being very observant of stuff that I'm missing left, right, and sideways. Uh, I am addressing the most obvious threats in the position. But um, this is not going to go well for me. I need to get my king off this diagonal, but I also want my king right here on e7. But also I don't want to drop c7. So I'm being super indecisive. Um, if I can plant my knight on e5, that's been my plan this entire time. I don't see a way that can backfire. But there's been a lot I've been missing this game. Um, bring it. Show me what you got. <laughs> All right. You backed off. Uh, we're going to get my king out of there. Um, but first... Let's get my bishop out of there. All right. We're not going to fall for this stupid little discover check winning my queen. Um... Oh, this is painful. Okay. Um. Well, I got my king moved over just where I wanted it. Be careful what you wish for, I guess is the lesson there. Um. Got exactly what I wanted. Uh, oh, that was not bright. Well, that no, was okay. Shit. Shit. All right, congratulations, buddy. Well played. <sighs> that is very frustrating. My opponent did keep on the time pressure. I blew it terribly in time pressure i'm quite mad about this even though i don't sound it um so i'm trying to go over the game without being completely pissed about this just because like they did everything your typical c player would do um except they did play this d5 move which i don't think a c player would have done This was greed. Um, alternatives were go back here and repeat, which is basically how a beginner would play this. Um, or go back here, regroup, and hope to outmaneuver me. And realistically, a 2300 could probably manage to win that. Because um, I didn't know what I was going to do next here. 
kind of wanted to play d5, but really didn't. Because d5, then my bishop can never get onto this long diagonal. Yeah, I don't know. Like, probably playing the king over and uh, shoving some pawns somewhere would have been the idea. But didn't really have a good plan here. Um, what surprised me about this is... Uh, well, d4 did surprise me because I... Um, what was it? Like, here, I should have played d5. D5... Well, no, d5 hangs this pawn. But, like, my position... Oh, I'm sorry. Where was it? Um, here, I moved my knight. This is where I could have just built up for a very quick d5. Could have gained a tempo to tuck my queen over here. Um, normally... Uh, white has not squandered Tempe uh, in this way. It's so normally for black to launch an initiative in the center and king side. Doesn't happen so quickly here. I think c6 and queen c7 is appropriate, but also this knight g6 is fine. Basically, black has gained a tempo on the regular version of this. Um, yeah, knight g6 is good. Um... But since white has got their bishop off sides, you should play c6 first and then knight g6. Um, maybe even a5, trying to exploit this bishop a different way, might be appropriate. Um, depending on whether you're playing for a draw. Like, if I want to play a5 and exchange on b4 and trade rooks, um, a5 is probably fine. But c6 and knight g6 is also very powerful. Uh, yeah, so allowing d4 without gaining a tempo. And then they played into this, and I'm like, I can win this. And yes, I can, but I just have to play better. Um, <laughs> ironically, if I'm playing for a draw, this is the way to do it. Um, this discover check, and assuming they move into the corner, then just go back knight f2. Actually, no, the way to play for a draw here. Check, check. What are they going to do? They can't escape. So if I want to draw my 2300 rated opponent, there it is. Um, but I wanted more, as I should. Um, um, Knight g3 is definitely thought-provoking forces black to react one way or the other i thought this was okay and then i played it and then we got this and i did not like what was happening but this is probably still best um yeah no i stand by this um but only because i have this here like thankfully this tactic saves my bacon and white has to um, back off a bit. Bishop d3 didn't actually improve white's initiative any. Like, if white could force me to collapse on the king side, that would have been fantastic. But probably the way to go is this kind of thing. Because um, you're also threatening this stuff. I'm not sure how I would react other than panic. So if I look at this position... Oh, well... Except for queen c3, black is just better here. Queen c3, king g8 to stop queen h8. Um, yeah, that's super spooky. So instead of queen a4, this is even spookier. And apparently King G8 is... Oh. oh no, the verdict's still out. Never trust an endgame, or an en engine to evaluate an endgame. But, um, yeah, once I got C6 in, uh, this is just better for black. I was too spooked to try this. Uh, this check can move somewhere, and then this. I saw this, and I saw like that, and I'm like, okay, uh, 
what do I do now? And so it's really easy to go awry there. Um, I don't think queen d4 actually improves anything. This might improve things if it didn't leave me exposed to all kinds of attacks. Um, probably better is just to find a place for my knight. How about there? I don't know. Actually, that just wins the pawn. That completes my domination. So uh, I just had to find one move. So I was always just one move away. Um, oh well. We see what Fishy thinks about the discovered attack. I probably missed the time where your comment would have been appropriate, but yeah. Just one move, and I had six seconds or something to find it, so I wasn't ever going to actually win this against a 2300. They're just really good at chess. Uh, knight takes f2. Oh yeah, you want to see like... Um, yeah, so if I actually do a discovery here... Uh, do I have a shot? I felt that knight d3 was best. Even if the engine tells me something else is better, I don't trust it. It's like knight d3. Okay, white's only chance to try to win this would be king there. And then, yeah, stockfish likes knight f2 check. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um... Okay, so finally settled on knight takes e1. I just felt like, I don't know. It says black is better by a piece. But uh, this is spooky, man. It's so spooky. Um, I mean, yeah, black does have extra material. They're up in exchange. Uh, black can get the knight to e5 pretty quickly, but uh, man, is that spooky. Yeah, I... Like, why would I do this to myself? This knight is my best piece. Um, granted, I lost the knight. Got a really nice, pleasant endgame. Instead of being up in exchange and having to find all sorts of tactical stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, where do I think I blew this? Other than just being in time pressure. Um, what can I do? I don't know. This is probably the more pleasant option, even though I don't feel it's very good. And the reason I don't feel it's good is because white's got this attacked. They've got this nice little every... Sorry, my mouse has slipped here. Um, they've got this nice powerful e-file. They've got my bishop off sides. Um, and my knight's in a weird position, and they have a knight pair while my king is kind of under fire. So, I mean, yeah, I can step out of this. But I'm going to struggle with tactics for the next minute until I lose my king somehow. Or get my bishop trapped. Um, or give up the long diagonal. Like, all my pieces are so strangely placed here. Um, I don't have to deal with that advanced e-pawn, but no, I guess I did play this probably the most reasonable way a human could. Um, maybe taking f2 would have helped. I don't know. I just needed an extra tempo, and I never got it. My opponent played very aggressively. Maybe this is it. Bishop g6, is this any good? Eh. Bishop g6 is fine. Yeah, I don't know. My opponent just never gave me the extra tempo I needed to regroup. 
and I just need to find that one move toward the end of the game, and I didn't see it. So, I played a good game, but even though I played about 30 good moves, it was still no good. Um, at the end, I managed to blunder it all. That's just how it goes. Um, Alright, let's exchange. Normally, I play into the main line, but today we're going to play this line. So this way we get an end game. I'm not sure where this is going to go. My opponent doesn't need to decide immediately. Um, I could play e5 here. Looks kind of fun feels kind of fun. Let's try it. And then I'm not sure how I'm going to back this up. Obviously I need to get my pieces developed. Um, okay. We've gone full Pierce, guys. <laughs> Never go full Pierce. Um, I'm debating, do I do e6? It's a fun little sacrifice, but I need my pieces out first. So... Yeah, we've taken this game a whole different direction. Oh, yeah, you just think, what would Magnus do? And then just do that. Not ed6 and then Eric e1. Um... No, that would be the logical thing to do. That would involve, like, foresight. Um, oh, goodness. Instead, I drop a pawn. Instead of, like, winning one. Alright. Uh, I'm not pleased. Even though I get an endgame, this is not the endgame I wanted. Yeah, I tried to get all fancy. That, and I just missed that Rook E1 was check. So I didn't think it was anything special. But yeah, it's a check, and if they respond to it, then I could play D4, winning the pinned piece. So that forces King F8, and White's just better. Um, instead, we get this endgame which I know you've all been waiting for this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll just pretend we played a gambit. Make sure to use all the pieces. Try to line up something with your opponent's queen. Yeah. I could have had a good game. Now we're just going to have an okay game. My opponent has bishops on these nice long diagonals. And I don't even have any pressure anywhere for this. This is my only pressure. This and that weak pawn of theirs. Um, which probably is going to roll to c5 any instant now, and I'm underdeveloped. Yeah, so like, if I exchange in the center, this just improves his situation, so I'm not exchanging. But... Um, so yeah, you're right, that right now his bishops are looking at pawns. We saw, what was it, two games ago, I had a bishop pair. And if I had just calculated everything perfectly, I would have been so much better. But that's not how chess works. Mistakes happen. Alright, so normally I would want to play knight d5 threatening this, but they have queen d6 here, which takes all the fun out of it. Normally I want to play my knight up to c5, but that's also no bueno. It's just nothing's happening here. Here, let's put my bishop on a fun square. 
And what makes that fun is this little tactic. Um, granted, this instant it doesn't work, but I'm betting at some point this will pay off, or they'll have to play f5 and I just go back. All right. Knights are tricky pieces. So this knight's going places. Got the fork in again. We got this going on. Probably there's only one move here to... Well, no, that one move, king h8, does not simplify things in black's favor. Um... So, hey, check it out. I'm a genius. <laughs> Woo! All right, did I guess right or what? Uh, okay. Well, that was silly. Um, yeah, that's how you win at 3-2. You either win in the end game or you win in the middle game. It's always some stupid something or other, and that's why they call it Blitz. Alright, and if they lift the Rook, then that's a free Rook. So in a way, this is a fork. Um, would you care to exchange anything, sir? All right. I kind of prefer my position here. All right. Well, that was unfortunate. I kind of wish, like, tournament games, you could just say, I want to play the better side of a position and see if you could win it. The whole building up to the winning position is just terrible. But yeah, when you're looking at this position, you gotta think twice before playing a move like that. Uh, granted, my opponent's in time pressure, but um, I've lost enough games for my immediate reaction to be play one of these rooks to e8. Uh, don't try to be the hero. Um, maybe even bishop f6 and just get double pawns or something, but get something you can manage. Because this is, this is the way for black to assert that they're better. But, um, like, this is probably the best move in the position. But it requires you to play very accurately. Because you've just trapped your bishop. And I would prefer active over accurate play in blitz. Um... Oh, also, pro tip, <laughs> when your king is exposed, don't exchange and let your opponent advance. <sighs> like, in this position, okay, yes, I have pressure on the e-pawn. Yes, pawn structure is some factor to be considered in chess, but, yeah... I, I don't know, man. Even if the engine tells you that you should take on d4, just consider whether or not you're ready to play that position. Um, it's not really about what's the best move in a position in Blitz. It's more about what's the best position for you. And even in tournament play, in like slower, serious games. It's not so much what's the best move in this position, but again, what's the best move for you? What are you trying to achieve in playing a game? If your goal is to win every game, you're going to have some boring games. Um, if that's your tournament objective, then okay, fine. A lot of people are fine with that. They just keep track of their score and oh, I was better here, and, um, but no, um, another important part of the game is having a fun story to tell when you're done. Ah, <sighs> so, I've played this one before. I'm trying to remember how this goes. This is not a good time to, 
um, struggle with memory, but let's see. I played the same opening just a couple days ago. Afterward, I looked up with, uh, uh, I think, the opening explorer, just what are typical avenues of play in this position. Uh, and I have subsequently forgotten it all, so we're going to have to learn it all again. That's okay. This looks kind of fun. This looks less fun. I just blew it. At least I get a pawn for my troubles. Um, no, I don't. Who am I kidding? That's not my pawn. Um, yeah. I have completely forgotten this and was distracted trying to entertain you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, I created this theme. Uh, it can be... Uh, if somebody can remember the command to get the link for it, um, then I could give you the link for it. What did I... Oh, I called it style. That's what I called it. Yeah, I created that uh, theme. So you can download it, um, plug it into your browser with a open source um, plugin called Stylus. All right, fine. Spend a couple more Tempe pretending that I can get my Rook out, but really I'm just trying to take the D file. Hey, check it out. <laughs> a couple moves ago, I'm like, there's no way they'll be stupid enough to fall for that. But maybe. Like, it's the only way I can try to get back into the game. And, you know, it happened, so. Um... All right, we can play this way. Got two threats. Do I have three threats here? I thought I had two, but this might be a serious third threat. Holy moly. Um, that's too good to be real. But knight f4 and then I take on e6 and take on c5, or do I take c5 first? If I take c5 first, they play rook d2, and we have ourselves... Well, it's not a perpetual, but... Um, no, the forking and then taking on e6, putting some weaknesses in my opponent's pawn structure is probably useful. A knight is not such a great piece in this wide-open position. Um... Okay, I seriously did not expect that to occur. I am so confused. All right, we're going to play it this way. I'm even more confused. Why would you continually worsen your position like that? Are you that confident that I'm going to blunder this? I'm not saying your confidence is misplaced, but why play that way? It's easier to play in a winning position than a losing one.
I'm so confused by my opponent's play. If their objective was to confuse me, boy have they succeeded. With 2 minutes 32 seconds remaining, they have confused me. Your move. All right. I, I don't understand what happened that game. All right, so I just shoved over a 2160. They want a rematch. Fine, we'll play one more. I don't get it. I would analyze that, but there's really not a whole lot to go over. Why would anyone play this boring crap? There's so many other lines that you could play. Okay, we found a way to make it interesting. I respect that. What is my opponent doing? This makes no sense. This looks a lot like our previous game where I got a very strong attack. Except this time white doesn't have any attack, so... Um... I've managed to solidify my pawn structure, and okay, I've made a weakness, but there's just not a whole lot going on in this position. How many ways can I blunder this? Yes, I can play e4 and win the pawn outright, but I don't want the pawn. I'd rather just win the game if that's okay. So I'll try to play a lot of solid moves and just hope my opponent isn't up to the task of finding some way to break through. <sighs> I just don't get it. I know this is like super hypocritical after I asked about people wanting boring games but like what am I supposed to do throw this okay my opponent has a threat on h6 I found a way to throw this guys aren't I good um, yeah, the time pressure got to me. So how do I try to play this out? I guess this is as reasonable as anything, but I'm probably cooked. If I had another, yeah, that'll do it. Congrats, man. Let's take a look at this.
So, yeah, I didn't want to play bishop d4, but I just struggled for an idea. I could have shuffled here forever, um, but I didn't want to shuffle. So, okay, apparently white's position's fine until they play queen f3 somehow. Yeah, bringing the rook up and over would have been very strong here, actually. So, rook e6 was terrible. Um... You remember, I stopped here trying to find something. Couldn't find it. Uh, apparently, Stockfish's magic move here is knight h5. Normally, I rule this out because my opponent could just play uh, g3 in response to knight h5, and the knight looks stupid on the rim of the board. But here, there's some tactical justification because this bishop pins the f-pawn. So... Yeah, this knight to h5 is actually super strong, and this other discovered attack is just no good. Um, when I ended up playing with h6, I regretted, um, but I didn't see knight h5, so what am I going to do? You either see knight h5 or you don't. I did briefly debate rook e8, and I'm like, well, my opponent just powers up uh, their attack here. If they have to, they exchange here on f6 first. I don't know. But, like, this is not... This is entirely unpleasant for black, even though black is far better. Um, so. Queen d7, again, I was stumbling for moves. h6 here would have been fine for some reason. I'm not sure I understand. I guess the knight to g6 is stupid if I'm not planning to move my other knight and take the f4 square. Um, yeah, this is super awkward for black, but it's just better. Uh, so maybe I just need to stop playing 3-2 and play something slower. That's probably what's going on here. Uh, Ed5 takes... So I thought this was a bit adventurous for black. Uh, for whatever reason, my opponent chose not to check me. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this isn't even check. So, yeah, I miscounted by one. I thought that rook e1 and I wouldn't be able to castle. I have to play queen d7 or something, but... No, I actually have time to castle, so this entire idea by white... <sighs> Stockfish likes it. I don't. I mean, I get the e6 square is weak, but, um, well, we saw how the game played out. There's something here. I've... Oh, just knight of six, right? If I play knight of six here, if they take, I could take, we could exchange twice, and I don't know. Yeah, ed4 was um, evidently not best. Oh, knight takes e4. Even better. And so my king is not exposed here, and I'm threatening to take there and castle and stuff. Um, surprise knight takes e5 is so not favorable here. This wasn't even what I looked at the other day. What was I looking at the other day? Bishop e6 is kind of ridiculous, but I couldn't remember the theory. Um, knight f6 looks fine. And then knight a5, and... Wait, what's this? a4 lets the bishop have somewhere to go. Yeah, c6 looks better than this thing Stockfish threw out earlier. Ay, ay, ay. So. This is super weird. For some reason, Stockfish thinks all these moves will happen. I'm fairly convinced that White would play c3 here. And since White would play c3 here, and I don't like this position very much, I would much prefer this. Um... Apparently white can take on f7. 
how the hell does this work? Oh, I've trapped my knight. Okay, well that's cheeky. That's super cheeky. Um, but still, like here, if I don't feel comfortable with any of that, I could just play bishop e6 and accept a slightly inferior position. Um, yeah. I think this is what I was looking at the other day. I don't know. But still... I just don't get it. I don't want to play knight a5. I know knight a5 is thematic. I don't particularly enjoy playing that every time. There was something more appealing that black could do here than the knight a5 stuff, but I don't recall what it is. And unfortunately our opening explorer is still... oh, it's up. That's perfect. h6 is fine. c3... Castle, Ricky one, a six. So this transposes into the main stuff. So you could keep the knight on c six for a while, apparently. What I've been pining to play the entire game, most of these games, is bishop e six, just trying to trade off into something. Um. Oh right, this was the thing. This uh, this idea. Because uh, with h3, white is given the tempo, black can get the knight out to f4. So I know that the... oh, actually it is the top database move. It was not the top engine move, but it's the top database move. Yeah, so this looked super interesting to me. Um, so if I could just remember these moves, um, I could play this position and have an okay time playing it. Um, g6 looks special. I don't know if I agree with g6 here, but there's stuff going on here. Yeah, oh, right, right. No, so I was overjoyed by this possibility that, um, bishop e3, and then I get to exchange this damn bishop. Instead of black being the one exchanging on e6, we get the exchange on e3. And even if white doesn't double their pawns, which doubling the pawns might be a good thing because it reinforces the center push, but if they don't double their pawns, um, black's just gained some tempi on some sort of kingside pawn storm. And this is an entirely symmetric position, and black uh, has the bishop complementing the pawn chain. White's bishop also complements their pawn chain, but this bishop will hit the f7, and f7... Um, I know with all the arrows on the board, it's difficult to tell, but f7 here, uh, if you look, here's the squares that a knight would have to go to um, to attack f7. So um, there's no real threat on f7 itself. I guess the real threat is to take on c6, but um, black's got that covered. So I think this is very good for black in terms of an opening outcome. Um, White playing h3 gives black the time they need to do all this stuff. So if black just plays a bit patiently and is not so paranoid that d4 is going to land instantly, because every time it lands, it's terrible for white. Um, but if it could land with tactical advantage, it would be awesome for white. It's just it never works out in this particular variation because white's lost a tempo. Um... And so, yeah, because white's lost a tempo, they no longer have this possibility, which is super uncomfortable, that's in the main line. Um, so that's why in the main line, often I do allow this in blitz, but probably I should just play h6. Um, it's what all the masters are playing. Anyway, I rant too much. Um, let's play some tournaments. Well, okay. All the tournaments end in, like, 10 minutes here except for this one what's this one the daily atomic arena yeah, okay we're gonna play some atomic that seems like a good idea all right so that's me ranting 
Um, so I should go back to my earlier tangent that I've been making tons of stockfish patches to try to make it better at atomic chess. Um, at least in positions that humans are exploiting at the moment, and none of my ideas are working. Um, most of my ideas are involving get ridding, getting rid of a parameter. Uh, all right, so are we going to see queen, B, queen f3 here? Maybe I play this. I don't know. We're going to see d4. There's d4. All right, let's try this. So what I'm learning uh, each time I play more games of this is that much of this opening phase is about getting the queen on an active square and about having pieces that complement the location of the queen. Um, much easier said than done. I sense that I'm playing a good player. <laughs> I feel so trapped. I feel so incredibly trapped by this. My opponent must be at least 2,000. Or they just really know their theory, and... Um, I walked straight into something. Well, yeah, knight, F, knight g4 there would have been reasonable. I saw it after I moved, but knight g4, and I would have had some really exciting tactics going on. Now I ain't got shit. So, here, let's put the bishop somewhere useful. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. They're 1960. Couldn't help but look. So if they check, I've got to do something. The something I do is probably just c6. If they don't check, this is... What? No. No, this is no good. Es no bueno. Like, unless you have mate here, that's just no good. And I'm pretty sure you don't have mate. So now I just have to put my pieces on active squares. You know, I don't get it. This would have been a try to at least attempt to hold the game together. Uh, it's too late now. And the key here is that um, uh, I just have too many pawns covering too many spaces. And there's no way to break through this before it's too late. It's true that all my pieces are trapped. But also there's no breaking through it. So, like, when did this... Yeah, I don't know. When did it all fall apart? Ah, uh, the great philosophical question. Ouch! I'm sorry. I did not mean to insult, but... Oh, d5 is a huge blunder, apparently. Um, apparently, knight h3... Oh, I have no way to address this. Wait, knight c6? Why knight c6? Where was it in the game that I had knight g4? I don't... Okay, blunders aplenty. Oh my god. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, I dropped two and a half pawns, or you dropped two and a half pawns, I dropped one and a half every turn. Yeah, here I missed knight g4. This I should have seen, but I'm a derp. All right, I was just trying to remember where do I go to get back into the tournament. Um, uh, some friend. I'm not sure how much longer I'll be online here. I'm thinking of wrapping it up in another... 10 15 minutes or so and honestly probably much of that's going to be pretty quiet i'm not sure i could keep up this standard of play 
Yeah, maybe some other time. All right, here's the threat. Um, hmm. Oh, queen c5 is no good. Okay. <laughs> I was contemplating that for an instant. Thankfully, no more. Um, how about this? Is this any good? <laughs> Does this just win on the spot? Survey says, oh, maybe not. Okay. It felt so good. Oh my goodness. All right. We'll just play a move. Just play a move and play a move and see where we end up. don't understand this position at all. Um, I am spooked. I am getting wrecked somehow. It's some 10D chess game that I'm just not seeing, like, eight of the layers of. Um. Oh, okay. I'm starting to see the layers. It's not looking very good. Uh, we've got one minute left to lose this to an 1800. I mainly looked at that from a perspective of trying to see the tournament clock. Um, seeing my opponent's rating isn't going to save me here. Okay, you could take g3 and kersplut all my pieces. Ay, ay, ay. What a mess. Oh, that's no good. Uh, that was not his most accurate move. How the hell do I get my pieces active? Okay, we're going to play this, not to attack the bishop, but so I can get my damn bishop off the back rank in one piece. Well, that kind of worked. Um, I am so doomed. If they just find... Oh, I should have taken here. Um, Alright, we're not going to finish this game in time for the end of the arena. Um, we tried. Okay, I guess I'm giving a knight for a pawn. Or at least offering to. Ah, oh, this sucks. Boy, does that suck to have to play Bishop D1 there. Um. 
All right, I'm gonna play another move that sucks. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Um, guess we're playing the knight in the way. And I'm doomed. All right, they got me. Perhaps that's a good uh, place to wrap it up. Oh, you beat uh, Hafan to place third. Very nice. I forgot that this was not an increment game. And I'm like, oh, where did all my time go? Um, but um, So how did I blow this? Oh my goodness. So I guess I'm way overrated in atomic chess. Um, I guess losing the queen was not a good start. So what's going on here? H6, E3, E6, Knight F4. Okay, apparently F5 and black is just much better there. So knight f4 is the move, and like this is stuff that happens, and I forgot how this worked. <sighs> well, I deserved that then. If I can't remember the first three moves of the game, how can I expect to defeat people who are playing competitively? I don't know. But congratulations Hyperion. Hyperion Chess. A lot of people name chess on this site, but you got Hyperion Chess. Um, an avid chess player and enjoys different variants, trying new openings and analyzing professional games. Very nice. It's always good to have some enthusiasm. <laughs> Alright, well, I think we're going to wrap it up there. So, uh, thanks to everybody for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Have a good night.